morning. Hi. <laughs> Coming out the gates with all the energy. <laughs> Welcome to Cosplay Stitch and Seam. I'm Panin. I'm V-Fire. <laughs> and I'm David. <laughs> That was that was like a huge burst of excitement there. Are you are you very excited for today's episode? I am. Okay. Okay. I've always wanted to start off like just being really obnoxious. Like- <laughs> you can check that off your bucket list. Congratulations. I can. <laughs> Well, as always, if you guys want to reach out to us, you can send us an email at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com or... Or you can go to the website, cosplaystitchandseam.com, and fill out our contact form there, or... <laughs> or you can go to our Facebook, send us a message on our Facebook page, Cosplay Stitch and Seam, or you can join our group and join in on all of the Work in Progress Wednesdays. We comment there with, hey, help us with episodes and whatnot. Or you can also go to our iTunes, our Apple Apple Podcast, whatever they want to call themselves, Stitcher, Podchaser, wherever you can leave us a review, leave us a review. We'd love to hear your feedback. Yay! Um, We do have one big announcement. Um, If you listened to last episode, we talked about going into the Voice of the West competition. We are happy to announce that we are officially the 2020 Voice of the West podcast of the year. So, yeah! (laughs) It was some stiff competition. I will tell you that It really was. Like The judges were, were talking and we were hiding and talking amongst <laughs> ourselves going there's no way that we won there's just no way <laughs> it was it was it, it was, was a hard, there was some really cool thing. podcasts on there yeah, yeah. Uh, the maxwell institute is really interesting if you enjoy more of the religious conversation super dirt is one that i've started subscribing to where it's like tmz but for superheroes yeah i love it it's great um so yeah we're really excited about that and yeah Thank you guys for your support. We couldn't have done it without you, and we appreciate every one of you. You guys are the best audience ever! Mm. <laughs> Real quick, um, yeah. I was a guest on Pod of Your World. It is a oh. Disney podcast. <laughs> I love the pun there. It's real good. Uh, I love those two guys. They are fantastic. And they just kind of do they do Disney trivia, and they talk about some of the Disney Plus uh stuff i i got to go on a second time we did some disney trivia whether i won the disney trivia or not you're gonna have to go and listen um but if you if you feel compelled to follow them uh just let them know that we sent you there yay cool well as you guys may know it is still june and we promised to do a pride episode so that's what we're talking about today yeah Um, pride We've got, yay, we've got some uh, awesome comments and stories from y'all at home uh, that we're really excited to share, and we just want to talk about all kinds of fun stuff. So, yeah. Um, I thought we would start off, because we've never actually, like, officially addressed this, but how do you guys identify? Who wants to go first? (laughs) I'll let you go first, (laughs) V-Fire. All right. Uh, I've, like been kind of figuring this out but i think i identify as whatever you perceive me as because it makes me incredibly happy i've mentioned this before it makes me incredibly happy when i'm in a guy costume and or i'm dressed in a more masculine way that people say oh him over there and i'm like sweet (laughs) (laughs) um it just i don't know it makes me feel great uh but i also uh like identify as female and there are some days where i just feel like a they so Whatever you feel like I am that day, you can call me that. <laughs> I'm not gonna like be like, oh no, that's wrong. So that's where where I'm at right now, anyways. What I'm kind of figuring out. So yeah, you guys go. <laughs> I'm weird. You're not <laughs> weird. That's what this whole episode is. <laughs> we are reassuring our listeners that they are not weird. <laughs> it's a, it's embracing your weirdness. It's about. It's about being proud and flaunting your weirdness. That's right. That's exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I have to be self-depreciating. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Proud, Mercedes. Be proud. I'm proud. I'm proud of it. Good. (laughs) Good, good. For me, I've actually, I've never really talked about this, but um, I, I really don't feel comfortable 
uh, in most public forums talking about it because I have family members who are very conservative, um, who are not terribly tolerant. Um, but I identify as pan, so that shouldn't surprise anyone because panin and paninator, <laughs> and I should have seen the writing on the wall before it, <laughs> I took my that name. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm on the same page with you, Mercedes, as far as gender. I feel like I'm still kind of figuring out where I fit in that, but I feel like it's a good idea to like never stop learning, never stop uh, finding out more about yourself. So, mm. yeah. I uh, I have for a very long time uh, defined myself as male. And I was uh, not necessarily like overly proud, but it's just like I am confident in, in who I am. Mm. It's definitely been a question for the past few months of like, do I still want to define myself as this? And kind of the journey of like, who am I? Where am I going? Things along those lines, mm -hmm. but for for the foreseeable future, until I like I tell all of my partners, I am an ever growing, changing person. What I think today and believe today may change tomorrow, and I I want to allow myself that growth at any point in time. So the the long short answer is I am a male semi straight polyamorous kinkster, and nice. it's <laughs> it's just who I am. I love that description. <laughs> nice. Thank you. That is amazing. Say, I was going to say, and in a pure uh, on the A spectrum uh, demi fashion, I did not actually state my sexual preference kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I am demi, um, which is on the A spectrum, which means uh, I only sexually connect with people that I am like, there's like a, a huge emotional connection kind of thing. It's. I don't know. I don't go be like, oh my gosh, that guy's so hot, I'm turned on right now. I, I just don't do that. <laughs> um, it's... I don't know. So that I'm That is okay. It. There we good. go. <laughs> good. Good job, I almost Mercedes. said I was weird again, but I'm like, no, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. Good. <laughs> Every time, you just replace it. <laughs> yes, it's like, I fix, fix that in my head right here. And you're yes. proud of it. Well, one of the things we wanted to talk about was also how to be a good ally if you know, you identify as cis and straight and things like that, um, you can still support those in your community who don't. I think the most important thing you can do is to educate yourself. There is so much uh, queer literature and so many interesting articles and studies and all kinds of things you can find out. And just like with cosplay, the more you learn like you never stop learning you yes. learn a new thing and you're like oh that's really cool i want to know more about this oh that's cool i want to learn more about that so i guess that's how i feel about the whole thing is like uh when i was uh, a lot younger um i didn't really know much at all about human sexuality and it's like the more i have learned the more i've learned about myself mm -hmm. so i would say yeah that's the very first thing is to learn more about yeah. Yes. I, I I would definitely agree, and like my wife has been um like my gateway of knowledge, and also has allowed me to do some dumb dumb things as far as making statements of like, but what about this? And not saying that you need to have this one friend that like, okay, but I need to make the dumb thing, but. <laughs> being able to have a safe space of like, hey, I'm right. not sure where I'm going, what I'm saying. Is this right? What's going on? As someone who's poly, I get kind of that same vibe of like, well, what is it? What does it mean to have this? What is what is jealousy and, and all those things? So like, I'm used right. to that kind of dumb. So I know that like, I, I just want to educate people about my experience in life. And I'm sure that there are some people of color, there are some trans people, some just anybody in the LGBTQ plus, like they are so used to having somebody come up to them and ask them a question about their life experience. Mm -hmm. But knowing who the friends are that like, hey, can I ask you some insensitive questions? I'm, I'm trying to learn more and I want to make sure that I am on the right path or I want to be corrected and be told, how can I be doing better? Nice. Mm -hmm. That willingness to improve and get better and learn more is, I mean, it's just, it's compassionate to be able to do that, to like, 
take the time and be like, I want to learn more about this. It's it's also a very humbling experience. And, you know, I think that's something that allies can do on a continual basis. For sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention uh, talking about like making spaces feel safer. Um, you as like a straight ally can also make people feel safer by doing things like using pronouns in your own bio, even if you are cis and straight, um, it makes people feel like they can also post them in their bio. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, It just makes it like normalizes things Mm -hmm. and it like costs you nothing to do. (laughs) One that that I've been trying to work on is referring to my husband as my partner. Um, Oh, nice. Because he was my partner in crime. Uh, I mean, uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like he's my, you know, my person, my partner. And I, getting used to that one is kind of like, it's interesting because it's like, well, it's not wrong. But it's like, I've just been so used to saying just my husband over here. Um, but, uh, yeah. I like awesome. my partner. I think it sounds cool, too, though. So, yeah. See, and then like on the same spectrum, uh, we've talked about my wife, and my wife doesn't use uh, traditional binary pronouns of he or him. My wife, uh, my wife uses uh, z, z, or zem, and we have talked about how we we like the title of wife and husband because it's it's not necessarily gendered to us. It's just this is this is who this person is to me. This is this is my partner, and saying. Um, wife is just as endearing and supportive because I will go around and look going, wife, wife, where are you? Wife. (laughs) And, you know, it's almost more of a nickname than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. I am tiny wife. (laughs) (laughs) That is what Chris calls me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Another point I wanted to bring up is like, not just educating yourself, but listen like listening to stories from people who are actually in the community, listening to your friends who are part of the LGBTQIA plus spectrum, um, just hearing from other human beings about their experiences helps broaden your own. Mm-hmm. And like genuinely active listening, not okay, but I disagree with this part. Like, right. Just like try and listen, try to understand uh, because that's, what's going to create, the I don't know, understanding <laughs> um right yeah. totally like before i really i guess knew more about myself i knew it was like i don't know it was important to me to still show up at pride and show my friends that i supported them and show that like and support uh queer businesses and support the event itself and i mean it's kind of hard this year because we don't we can't have large social gatherings but um i think we can still celebrate if that makes sense Mm. yeah yeah and i've seen that through like people's facebook posts through uh you know just like online gatherings even and things like that it's like it's really great to see that pride is still being celebrated if not in just a different way Nice. Yeah, I agree. Um, On that note, uh, David actually looked up some charities for you guys to look out for. Did you want to talk about those for a little bit? I would love to. Um, I'm so excited for this. (laughs) So right now, it's definitely scary. um, And if you can't donate to a charity, don't. Like, if, if you feel financially you are not able to, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, your money needs to sit in your pocket. If you can, if you are able to donate a small amount or a larger amount or whatever, awesome. But do not feel that you are obligated to because we mentioned any of these. We these are just ones that I have done some research on. I like what they are doing. I have uh, done my research on them in the past, and I wanted to make sure that they got a little bit of the spotlight. So the first one uh, you may have heard before, uh, uh, the Trevor Project. And the Trevor Project is is about just finding um, a safe space for for people who are right, kids and teens out on the road, specifically among the LGBTQ youth, 
and helping them find a safe space if maybe they got kicked out because they came out to their family and their family didn't accept them or something along those lines. And it mm-hmm. helps them build a community of people that they can rely upon. And I am I'm very big on building that community. I tried to do a charity thing uh, last year. It didn't pan out, but um, I, I have nothing but regards for the Trevor Project and trying to make sure that they that their their youth are supported and taken care of. Another one is the Ben Cohen Foundation. And this one is specifically like anti-bullying and like... Oh yeah, I love that. Uh, I, I, I can only imagine that the three of us and let alone every one of our audience members can remember a time we've been bullied. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so not only do they like say, hey, this is a stand against bullying, but it's uh, against um, bullying against LGBTQ plus kids in any format or even adults of like, hey, this is not right. And they try and like make sure that um, people are educated in ways to support each other. And again, building that community. And that's that's what I'm all about. Um, The next one is the Matthew Shepard Foundation. Uh, This this is a group of people that like would come to your to, to your school and like do skits and whatnot do you remember these like you'd all sit oh, in the yeah. auditorium yeah 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 um so this is one of those groups that does that but again about being an ally uh providing oh. resources and whatnot for i wish we everyone. had had that when i was in elementary school but right I'm instead an of old dare and, and yeah abstinence and all that fun stuff uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> But they don't just do high schools. They can go to like um, workplaces and and talk as as like a third party, not necessarily like your HR mandatory meeting that you have to go to. <laughs> like these people actively come out. They provide resources. They provide information of who they are, what they're doing, and they try to strive for awareness and giving tools. The last few, my my personal favorite is is called Out to Innovate. And their their goal is to provide educational support and an environment for career development in, and enrichment for LGBTQ plus students, oh, cool. especially in the STEM field. So science, Ooh. mathematics, you know, all, all that stuff. I am um, here awesome. for this one. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> this as one, soon as I can, I want to donate. Like, that sounds... I love STEM. So <laughs> I love seeing that kind of stuff out there. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's like their whole goal is like, the next scientist is going to be somebody in the LGBTQ plus group. And they're all about just making sure that if if they are being harassed or they are not allowed entry into whatever school, they are going to do their best to fight for those people. Oh. Um, and it, it was just, it's really refreshing to, to see and hear about. That is incredible. That makes me so happy. Right? <laughs> P-flag. p flag all one word um it's for lgbtq plus people where their parents and families and allies providing support education advocacy it, they're committed to creating just diversity and making sure everyone's celebrated like it's this one's feels a little bit more generic but all of these after a while they're trying to do the same thing because some people just need that extra push to do a little bit more to be supportive right yeah the last one that i wanted to mention is called the okra project and when I was doing some research, I actually just found out about this today from somebody on YouTube, and I was doing some digging, and I found out that okra was actually a a snack that I was like, the, "This is a vegetable." <laughs> yeah, it was it was from Africa that the captured slaves would would hide away to eat on uh, on the voyage to America, um, uh. and it became a staple in the black community, especially in the South, and it. That's where you're mostly going to get it is is like Louisiana it's, and it's Alabama. It's super those good. Areas. I love it. I used it's to eat not, it growing up. It's not my cup of tea, but at the same time, like <laughs> depending you know, on how you make I, it, it can be really yeah. really slimy. Um, <laughs> that, or that is really really dry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's there's a, a non slimy version that you can try that's a, might be a little bit better to taste. Uh, I love the slimy version. Put a bunch of salt <laughs> on it. Uh, <laughs> it looks like boogers. <laughs> oh, um, <no. laughs> but the Okra Project, to bring it back around, um, yes. it's about black people who, who are trans, who maybe are homeless or do not have enough money to feed themselves and their families. And what they will do is they will send 
a black trans chef to your home or to a space Whoa. where they can help provide food, help create That's meal cool. plans. Wow. Um, you can donate X numbers of dollars and that, w- and they can even tell you like, this is one meal. This does this. I, yeah. I started doing research on this today oh, and awesome. I was really blown away by it. So the, so this is my, my five or six different LGBTQ plus charities that if you can support awesome. I know that the Trevor project has a branch here in Utah. They are really nice. They've been really, they, they are fantastic to work with. Um, I'm not sure about like def- different locations, but most of these have a national, if not international support. And they all just want to make sure that if there is some kid out there, if there's some adult there who needs help and support, these people are there to help them. That's so cool. Like I, I didn't know about several of these, yeah. so I'm already like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck yes. Can we link these when the episode goes live? Yeah, I will. I will Sweet. provide the links to these for sure. That would be awesome. Cool. Thank you for educating us. <laughs> I guess I'll also make sure that those links end up on uh, the blog uh, accompanying this episode as well. Yes. Awesome. Yay! Sweet. Um, so we also wanted to talk about since uh, we, cosplay is our thing. What? Um, I wanted to talk about queer media <laughs> representation. I know <laughs> um, media representation, whether it's anime, video games, comic books, etc. I feel like it's really important, no matter what you identify as, to um, take time to view, read, et cetera, play games, things like that, that show you these unique experiences that are outside your own bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I wanted to talk about some of my favorites and some that I plan on watching and etc. cetera. Yes, do it. So I just made a list. You guys are welcome to like shout out your own. Cause I, I mean, my list is just my own experiences. Totally. Um, so I just, uh, I guess as as of this episode airing, I will have just finished Shira on <gasps> Netflix. I'm I'm in season four right now. <laughs> oh yes, I, I was gonna bring this up if you did. Okay, cool. <laughs> I have. I'm in the middle of season four, but I plan to finish before the weekend. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna finish that last um, season still. <laughs> yes, it's it's super fun. I love that the world they've built. Um these LGBT relationships are seen as something normal, something every day. Um, and just, you, you know, they don't have to like be in your face about it. They're just like, Oh, you know, so-and-so's two dads or so-and-so's girlfriend. Um, and like one of my favorite characters that I really want to cosplay is, uh, goes by they, them. Uh, cause double trouble is awesome like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not so- only are they awesome like that, but, they, I, 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 I fear to try and put a label on this person, but I, I started looking up their profile, and it's very mm. clearly like they are in the LGBTQ community. And oh yes, the voice actor. Yeah, the voice Jacob something. Ah, I'm blanking, but I just, I just met that character today. Like literally, yes. I watched it earlier today. Uh, oh nice. So like, I was like, oh, who is this? This sounds, this voice sounds great. It kind of has a RuPaul esque vibe going on so i'm getting like that sassiness to it <laughs> who's go- who's doing this voice and yeah it's just a, it, it's a a good one to one representation of character to to actor that's awesome um so yeah i've been really enjoying shira i still have a few episodes left but cosplays are imminent for sure i also love that like there's a pair of princesses and one is plus size and they're in a queer relationship i was just like yes she's great um (laughs) (laughs) but anyway uh also other shows let's see uh voltron i have not actually seen this one yet but everyone tells me i need to watch it oh my gosh yes you do i love it so much (laughs) But but yeah, I remember when the announcement came out that one of the characters was gay, and I was like, "That's so freaking cool!" And it's like a lead character, so so yeah, I'm really excited to yeah. watch that one. Steven Universe deals with stuff like all over the gender spectrum and all kinds of relationships, yes. and I like that they come at it from a really like it's a kids show, but it's not a kids show sort of a thing, like they cover a lot of difficult topics but they do so in a way that is like easy to understand and digest especially if you're 
new and don't know a lot of things, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it just feels like they, they are seeking to educate and create a more inclusive atmosphere. And I love that. Let's see, some anime ones that I really dig. Uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena was probably like the first uh, gay lesbian series I ever watched. And this was... (laughs) So uh, when I was like 19 in community college, our college anime club was called End of the World, which is an organization that is in Revolutionary Girl Utena. And I, they were like, oh, yeah, you have to watch this series. And I was like, okay. And this me coming from a very conservative home with very conservative values watching this for the first time, it was very eye opening. And mm. um, I really appreciated uh, what it was for me at the time. Um, I will say that there are some trigger warnings on it. So make sure you look at those before you get into it if it's not your thing but i really love it it's actually by the same uh director as sailor moon oh super um so yeah so which i really dig and yeah it was it was one of the like there's there's a character arc in it and they suggest through the whole character arc that like someone's in love with someone else and then you turn out they were jealous of someone of the same gender and i was just like that was just an eye-opener for me i was just like oh oh you you can do that Oh, (laughs) which sounds really dumb. But like, as as a kid, I was like, oh, and I say kid as a 19 year old, but like, (laughs) it was it was really cool to watch. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I like Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant. I like Sailor Moon was another one I was going to mention. Because you have all kinds of different relationships. Um, you I have... thought they were just cousins that lived together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Oh. <laughs> um, so depending on if you're like reading the manga or watching the anime, um, there is, of course, uh, Sailor Uranus and Neptune, who are some of my favorites. Um, and then there's the Sailor Starlights, who are um, in the manga. They actually are female, but they are... They they dress as male, identify as male when they're acting as these idols, and then they change into females to fight evil and etc. And then in the anime, they actually do change physically from male to female. So it, it was really interesting as a that one I did watch as a kid. I went, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want that power. I know. <laughs> um, speaking of the same director that did Yuri, uh, that did uh, Utena and Sailor Moon, uh, they also did a series called Yuri Kuma Arashi, which is about uh, it's a more uh, mature themed series, but they use a lot of um, I can't think of the word symbolism. They use a lot of symbolism to talk about discrimination based on who you love. And I thought it was really interesting. Uh, Yuri on Ice, of course. Um, <laughs> it's hard to talk Ooh. about anime without Yuri on Ice. Um, right? It's it's such a cute, <clears throat> such a good... I really like that one. Um, I like that it portrays uh, a, a healthy relationship without like fetishizing anything. It's just very wholesome and sweet. Um, and I mean, every... I mean, you can look at any of these and find things that are problematic, and you should with a discerning eye, Mm -hmm. but I I really liked a lot of what that brought, especially that it was, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, male-male content uh, is kind of fetishy and stuff, and I like that this was seen as just like a wholesome, normal sort of show. It wasn't like aggrandizing anything, I guess. Mm Mm-hmm. Not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but but yeah, I just I liked it a lot. It was sweet, and I keep waiting for the movie, <laughs> but it's never coming. Let's see. Uh, I wanted to mention, of course, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. 
<laughs> um, it has uh, several queer characters. I really like how it plays with the idea of masculinity, where you have these like super ripped characters and they're doing these very super ripped um, doesn't even begin to describe yeah, that. Yeah, but they <laughs> but they are also like um not only do you get the like poses that are all over the fashion industry, you get uh men who cry, men who like Yes are totally like honest about their emotions and it's not seen as a weakness, you know? So I just, I really like the different representations that they have. I mean, um, it could, it could definitely do better in places for sure, but I like what's there. That, that has um, been a conversation that you and I have had quite a lot. Yeah. Like, what is happening in this yeah, one episode? Yeah. This is not. Oh my gosh. And like every season of Jojo, I'm like, it has a section where I'm like, this is really uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so, so take, so take it with like, there's oh, like, like Panon just said, there's always going to be like, this could be done better. Uh, yeah, but I but I can definitely sure. like agree to that. Like these men are ridiculous. These men yeah. are not um, are not the like let me bench press a freaking car. Um, yeah. <laughs> as much as like their muscle mass tells me that they could. At the same time, <laughs> I'm still sitting here like why like he's just he's just posing awkwardly. You know, it's yeah. me Dio as like standing in ways that I don't think bones would allow. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And um, it, it's all about just the ridiculousness of of that idea of of toxic masculinity that I can definitely like let's make fun of this trope of overly toxic right. masculine uh, Oh totally. Folk. Yeah. Um and I know it's a little bit queer coding, but Dio is like canonically bisexual, which I thought was cool. Like the creators of like anime series are usually very candid about character sexuality, but the they were actually able to like come out and say, no, Dio is canonically bisexual. I was like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> and you actually in later seasons see like him having a relationship with <clears throat> with another man. And I'm like, oh, that's that's awesome. I hate that he's villain coded, but like that's still cool. <laughs> um yeah. So there's a lot of things. <clears throat> like I said, it's fine to look at things with a discerning eye and notice what's problematic, but also there are good things. Um, I'm going to throw in a... Then, oh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, I've been, like, hogging the spotlight here. I'm going to throw in a few. Um, uh, before we hit record, I mentioned that I am playing Last of Us Part 2. And yes, yes. not to spoil anything, there is uh, characters who are um, lesbian, and there are characters who are trans, and there are a lot of complex feelings, and I'm going to cry just thinking about it. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I love this game. I love exactly what it's done. Um, and the way that they approach these things is much like she of like, this is just what they are, like who they are, what they do, and and how they feel. Like, this is what defines them. So, it, it like, there's no reason to point um, that, like, spotlight of like, hey! Hey, over here! We have representation! <laughs> like some Disney Pixar movies as of late. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you'll find that there are a lot more video games out there with representation in them than you actually thought that there were. And uh, I actually am awaiting my turn to do a bunch of video games <laughs> <laughs> hey. um, that I have a list of, but I will wait my I turn. Can. I want to mention, um, and this is this is with, with a huge grain of salt, Bojack Horseman. Um, oh, really? It, mm -hmm. it does one of the best definitions of the asexual experience so simply that I... Seriously? Yeah. It, oh, interesting. It, it, it takes, like, a couple seasons, but, like, this character's journey... One, it's ridiculous, this character, the entire time. But at the same time, like, his journey feels so natural that you're like, oh... Mm. Yes, this makes sense. The the growth of this character, their self discovery, and what they do with that information is is really well done. I was very touched by it. <laughs> I I was That's very awesome. just blown away. Um, they do a few like what they do. It just seems ridiculous and over the top, and the characters are not necessarily ones to mirror in any capacity, especially the 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 titular character. But at the same time, <laughs> what they talk about 
they talk about it well. It feels thorough. Mm. It feels fair and right and a little uncomfortable. And I think that some of these conversations should be a little uncomfortable. That's um, cool. Another one, and this one is uh, has a lot of cringe. So I'm not going to blame you if you if you stop watching it after episode one. But crazy ex girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> I actually really like that series. <laughs> I, my wife is is probably screaming at the top of Zier's lungs right now just because I mentioned it. Um, I'm mm. surprised you can't hear it through like the roof or whatever. But my wife loves this show, like a hundred percent, all about it. Was t- telling me from like day one, like it's not that great. But then, like as it grew, it became part of of Zier's daily lexicon, and now it's. It's something that we quote to each other as as we go through. And there's a a bisexual character, and they just like, oh yeah, no, she's dating a, a woman now instead of one of the other characters. And they, again, like Bojack, take it with a grain of salt. It may not be for everybody, but some of the things right. that they do cover, when they hit the moral of it all, then you feel like, oh, this is what you can draw out of it. Mm-hmm. Not to re- emulate the main character. <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> but a lot of the the tertiary and secondary characters have fantastic arcs. The Joshes are fantastic, and Daryl is also one of my favorites. Yes. And the music is is fantastic and great, and you should right. listen to it just for the music. But again, I, I will also add, um, I actually really appreciate the way they covered mental health in that series mm-hmm. um, because there are several characters with different mental health issues and the the way they handled it is actually something that made me decide to be like oh i should actually like find help for this mm, um that's good. so i yeah so for me it was really informative and i i don't know it was really good i enjoyed it a lot and the music is so fun <laughs> legend of cora and their mental health episode oh yeah Ooh, that was so good um good. Have you have you seen, seen Legend of Korra? Avatar? <laughs> we are going to remedy that. This. I thought we fixed no, this. We haven't this. fixed it yet. I We're going to keep on Shira, remedying that, and then I will watch Avatar. Okay. All right. Uh, I have seen. And then I will um, watch Korra. I have seen all of Korra. Awesome. I really liked their episode with the mental health issues with her post. Um, big stuff happening. Don't want to do spoilers for canon. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> Uh, it's great. We can discuss it, and we should we should watch it together and discuss it when you get there. Um, after oh, you know, you got to go through the first Avatar okay. first, of course. Okay. So yes, yes. <laughs> Let's see. I wanted to pop in with a uh, Promare, which came out recently. It's um similar to uh, like Gurren Lagann sort of stuff, but it was a whole lot of fun. It's about uh, futuristic firefighters. I've been really um, wanting to see that one. It's so good. I really like it. I mean. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but like I had a lot of fun with certain aspects of Gurren Lagann, and I feel like Promare is like the less problematic, way more fun version. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. So I really enjoyed that. Plus, the animation and graphics are like, as an animation major, I was just like, <gasps> oh, that's <laughs> so- <laughs> just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. The one I just barely started is called Horo Musko, which is Wandering Sun. Um, it depicts a student uh, who is described as a boy who wants to be a girl. And then also there's another student that's a girl who wants to be a boy. And the series kind of talks about uh, these characters coming to terms with their gender identity, um, which I, I it's they've handled it really well so far. And I've, it, I don't know, I saw it from some like, gifs and memes and things like that and then i went oh this is actually really fun so uh let's see what else do i have series that are not anime uh black mirror even if you only watch one episode of black mirror watch san junipero <gasps> oh my it gosh yes so good uh, oh, that's my favorite one <laughs> not only is it like one of the few episodes that has like a happy ending <laughs> doesn't leave you depressed um, at the end <laughs> doesn't make you feel like horrible at the end um <laughs> But, but yeah, it has a lesbian relationship and it's so sweet and wholesome and like they deal with a lot of real issues and I don't know, I just really like the storytelling of that part. Um, it was seriously incredible. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, v for Vendetta, 
which is topical anyway right now. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember sobbing in the movie theater when they have the the flashback scene of the the prisoner that V once shared a cell with. Oh my gosh, um, yeah. Just if you want something to help you learn greater empathy, it was it was very impactful. I really liked it. The I'll plug David's podcast here. The episode I was in, we talked about a comic called Bitch Planet, and it had characters all over the spectrum. It had like characters of all different like origins. It had all kinds of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Diversity. Mm. Um, and the story is also very relevant right now. Um, so, so yeah, I would highly suggest that one. Uh, da, 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 da. What else? Uh, Castlevania recently, yeah. the Netflix Castlevania. Oh, so um, much fun. It's again, mature content warning. Yes. Uh, I know some people would argue with this depiction of Alucard, but um, I thought it was really cool. Like some of the stuff they've done in the recent seasons, as far as video games, I also have some okay. of those I wanted to throw in real fast. I've got a bunch. Um, good. Okay. <laughs> why don't you take some? Cause I've been like, and this, okay. Okay. and this, and I really like this. Okay. So a lot of these video games that I'm going to mention are ones where it, a lot of them, it just allows you to romance whomever you want. Um, yes. regardless of whatever your character's, uh, gender is, which is always amazing. So dragon age, that's a big Yay. one. I uh, but going into a uh, kind of a smaller one, uh this is one that I highly recommend for people because one, uh it's a really really good game and two, I have a friend who worked on it. My friend Paige Aww. worked on it and they are amazing. And uh the game is uh 2064 Read Only Memories. Uh hmm. one of the really cool things about it is that there is a massive variety of sexualities that you're going to meet in the game as well as you get to choose your own pronouns and if your pronouns oh, wow. not on the list like if you're going through the list of all the pronouns and you can't find yours you can put in your own uh oh cool super duper cool uh i absolutely love it it's uh done like um super pixelated uh kind of like uh like oh, undertale or uh, uh undertale slash um why is my brain objection? Um, that one. Phoenix, Phoenix right? right? <laughs> Thank you. My brain was just not finding it. Point and click, like Phoenix right. There you go. And you've like oh, pan okay, over okay. and there's like mysteries and stuff like oh, that. Oh, that sounds yeah, awesome. I, uh, I love those kind of games. Yeah, you can get it digitally just about anywhere. Um, and uh, I actually managed to grab one of the limited run physical editions of it because Ooh. I'm going to have Paige sign it. So, Oh, cool. that's so cool. Yeah. Big one top that should be the top of most people's lists is Life is Strange. I was going to mention that if yep. you didn't. So. Yep. That one. Still one I haven't played either, so going to add that really? to the list. Yeah, uh, really. It's so good. Um, not only just like incredible storytelling for a video game, just amazing characters and also again mm. representation and like yeah. i don't know I and also like one it. of my favorite things it. is time travel in stories yes. um but i'm so picky about how it's done <laughs> um like y you have to like follow your own rules and this like i will go on a rant about time travel in stories but i like how it's done in this game it's really interesting well, i could have a whole conversation with you about time travel oh and, like, yeah how i hate <laughs> okay. it but that's another podcast that's another episode see <laughs> 90% of the time, I do hate it because it's done poorly to cover bad writing. And that's all I'll say about that. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a great way of adding it into things that makes it fascinating, interesting, and uh, I, I, I'm in the middle there, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, another fun one that maybe a lot of people don't think about, but like you totally can do whatever you want in it. It's The Sims. <laughs> Oh, right? yeah, I didn't even think of <laughs> yeah. that. It's like, it gets overlooked all the time, but it's like, The Sims, you can, you know, have same-sex marriages, you can do whatever you want in there, and it's, like, pretty cool, like, I don't know, I love The Sims, I used to play it a lot and build all my favorite houses. Um, <laughs> yes. I don't know if anyone's heard of this one. I I, I need this game. Uh, Dream Daddy? Yeah. I was gonna mention that one, too! <laughs> It's so fun. Have you actually played it? <laughs> Not yet, but 
oh I have gosh. it in my um in my Steam box. So, so. <laughs> like I I don't know if you know this, but I love stupid dating sim games. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do. And like I love that this one like lets you pick whatever you want your character to be. Like, um you don't have to be like uh like well, like you're a daddy no matter what, but you don't have to have been born male. You can like pick your character based on all kinds of different things um and then a lot of the characters within the story are also like varying places on the spectrum and the lgbtqia plus it's just it's just so good and there's so much representation and it's so like it's um, for the most part it's a really wholesome game (laughs) i mean you can definitely like take it some mature places but like (laughs) it it depicts like really sweet relationships, and I like that. That sounds yeah. wonderful. I need to. I it's need to. So pick it much up. fun. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's adorable. There's also uh, Horizon Zero Dawn had a really fantastic representation of a transgender character that, um, like, kind of, sh- kind of. It took me a minute to realize, like, because they don't like shove it in your face or anything. Um, you come across this guard character, um, and uh, the more you talk with them, you start realizing, wait, this guard is not was not born male, mm. uh, and if you try to bring it up with them, uh, he gets mad. <laughs> He's like, "I'll break your arm if you want me to prove why I, you know, I'm here. You know, I like, you know, they were born female. We're told that they could never, like." get out there and be able to protect their kingdom kind of thing and they were like Mm -hmm. screw that i'll just be a boy then that's awesome and uh when you actually look at them uh through the uh what is it the focus it Mm -hmm. shows a a, you know female body but this person is a male and so it's just like it was such a really cool like throw into that of you know sex and gender aren't the same thing Mm -hmm. and i just i don't know i loved that there's a there's a lot of other things in there i could go on and on forever (laughs) about that game because i love it um but also like my friend kimi and i will like discuss for hours on end like what is aloy's sexuality because there's so many people you can flirt with in the game (laughs) 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 um and so it just like it leaves it very open for her but also like having a relationship is not something that defines her it's not like the core of the story even it's just kind of like side stuff that you can kind of test with every now and then but she's not really focused on that she's focused on figuring out her mission and where she comes from that's awesome yeah but moving along there's also undertale Uh uh-huh i have yet to play undertale um but i do know that i it has a fair few um, LGBT characters in it. So that is also an amazing, um, I've heard it's an amazing game to play and I need to, I need to play it. <laughs> it's on my list for sure. Awesome. Um, I have been playing Stardew see. Valley. Oh, I was going to say that one too. Yay! <laughs> it's, it's not quite a dating sim, but it's one of those that's on my list of like, <laughs> it's practically a dating sim because you can romance whoever you want. Yes! And I'm very fine with that. It's like a harvest moon, but you have, you can romance whoever you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have uh, more from your list that you want to mention, Penny, yeah. you're welcome to. Um, I wanted to mention uh, Detroit Become Human. Oh, yes. Um, it's a little bit heavy handed with the storytelling and there's definitely some like things you could be critical about. Um, but they do like portray like lesbian relationship. They do like talk a lot about human sexuality and like they also like, I mean, it's not very subtle in the way they uh show uh the treatment of androids as like second class citizens and (sighs) how it can be uh put into our own current times of how people are treated Mm -hmm. so so yeah it's it's really good in in that regard uh i like the persona games in general uh but persona 4 uh has a character coming to terms with their bisexuality as a major story element hmm. um they also have like a character that i don't 
I don't really like want to like say what how they identify because I don't really know for sure because it's kind of left intentionally vague. Oh, cool. Um, and I really like that uh, most of the Persona games explore a lot of the human psyche as part of it, um, and they really make you like think about how people work in general, um, and it goes through a lot of psychological elements. So I enjoyed that one. Um, I was going to say Fire Emblem recently um, has with each new game that comes out, uh, your main character is able to have relationships with uh, more and more same sex characters Um, in Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think you have like four or five different options, which is much better than they've done in the past. Um, I wish you could just romance everybody, but (laughs) (sighs) (laughs) sorry but yeah i i enjoyed that i had those options and i also just liked flirting with everybody um (laughs) and then the last video game i was going to mention is called night in the woods have you heard of that one i have not um if you haven't heard of it you've probably heard one of the taglines from it which is be gay do crimes um it comes from that game it's kind of like a murder mystery in a small town but you're all like different like really chibi cute animals Aww. and the style is really like um it's really interesting stylistically and storytelling wise and um you get to spend time with different characters in this small town and they talk about like their history and like the character that says be gay do crimes is talking about how like um his dad tried to get him into like manly things and he's like yeah and i still like doing those manly things i just also like guys <laughs> i'm like yeah <laughs> you did that's awesome but yeah that one was really fun night in the woods and it's it's not a very long game but it was fun uh another game it's a it's actually a triple a game uh it's a it's a small series it only had a couple games uh it's called borderlands yes <laughs> Yay! Mad Moxie oh. is a bisexual. Tiny Tina is a lesbian. Axton is bisexual. Sir Hammerlock and his husband are are the, <laughs> like couple goals as far Dude, as I'm concerned. Seriously, um, they are so cute together. Mister Torg High Five Flexington, you have to say the full name, is bisexual. <laughs> I love uh, him. <laughs> Maya. Uh, who, who with Axton is one of the playable characters, is asexual. Mm-hmm. Athena and Janie Springs. A- Athena, again, another playable character, is is lesbian. Like, it's it's there. It's not subtly, like, hidden. Now, some of them, they are very, like, it feels queer baity, like, in the Assassin's Creed games. There are some that are like, mm. this feels queer baity. Like, yes, they, they definitely, like, there is uh, mention in history to leonardo da vinci's sexual preferences but at the same time like Mm. the way that they address it in the video game sometimes feels a little queer baity so like there Mm. are there are definitely attempts and then there are ones that do it really well like life is strange like in my opinion borderlands 2 and 3 do it really really good yes good um, and my last one I was going to mention, because I've talked about it in like the last five episodes, <laughs> is the untamed Modal Zushi is like one of my favorite new things. So, so yeah. And it's about uh, like ancient China, fantasy ancient China, and these two soulmates that get together. And it's really cute. So awesome. awesome. Yeah. Any other favorite medias? One Hannibal. that I wanted to... Th- throw at Hannibal. Wow. <laughs> <That's one. laughs> that was a leap. I, I, have, I have problems with Hannibal and like I'm talking like the Hannibal franchise in and of itself and mm. my thought is and, I, and I'm going back to the original movies and the books and the the, vilif- the vilifying of the, the queer character. Um, mm. For instance, in Silence yes. of the Lambs the bad guy is transsexual and Mm -hmm. it is constantly played that there is something wrong with this character because of the fact that they want to identify as that not just because they're going around killing people like that's that's wrong we're not i'm not saying anything else along those lines but like the fact that this character defines as trans or is aiming to be trans in some capacity that's that's the crux of what's wrong with this character and Mm. Which so, is horrible. So when you mention Hannibal, and I know that the Hannibal TV show 
is a different element, it still makes me come in with this this very large grain of salt of just saying, yes. okay, but this is where Thomas Harris, the author of the series, comes from. He does a lot of research, but he still mm. vilifies these characters mm-hmm. and these traits. Mm-hmm. For sure. Well, how about some positivity? Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did want to mention uh, one podcast that I, I've okay. been working through <laughs> the do. backlog for quite some time. Um, it's Oh, yeah, I didn't even think of podcasts to mention. Uh, it's called Jay and Miles Explain the X-Men. Um, I've been, Ooh. I just started, I started it like a year ago, and I'm only on episode like 170 of 308. Um, wow. But it starts actually as Rachel and Miles Explain the X-Men, and it's a married couple. And then mm-hmm. Rachel changes to Jay, and she, uh, she becomes he. And at first it was just, I, I prefer this. This is how I identify. And I'm pretty sure that they have gone through some sort of transition as of late. Again, I am 150 episodes at least behind. So they're, they, they talk about it openly. They, they even got a divorce at one point. Miles is polyamorous. And so he talks about mm. that occasionally. That's one of the things that just like, oh, that's, that's yay. That that's fantastic. Um, we've mentioned mm-hmm. it on the show before. The Magnus Archives. There are queer yes. relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to spoil anything, but there are queer relationships. Yes, I love that's Magnus Archives. Also, such an amazing story. Um, oh. um, also, the Adventure Zone. The Adventure Zone. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, has a lot of awesome characters and relationships. Uh, what was the other one I was thinking? Oh, Welcome to Night Vale. Uh, is another favorite. Uh, There's a a local yeah. one here in Utah, and I went to to school with one of the, the these people. Um, his name's Jordan, and he he runs a podcast called My Reading My Writings, and it's where he takes his husband and they read whatever writing or picture book that his husband wrote when he was in grade school. Oh my Aww! gosh, that's so, so cute. It's really ridiculous, and they call out like, "Wow, that was really ignorant of you to write when you were in the sixth grade." <laughs> Um, <laughs> wow um, the caravan it's r- over the top ridiculous and it has that rupaul vibe of humor going on throughout all of it if that's if that's the type of humor that you like and you enjoy that that type of positive affirmation that's definitely one that i would strongly recommend if if you are okay with a very short audio drama series, I would recommend Moonface. It is about a um, closeted American Korean, first generation uh, American Korean college student who's trying to figure out his life. It's six episodes. It's super easy to get through, and I got through it in a day. Ooh. Um, Pod of Your World. I, I know I, I just was on, the, on there, <laughs> but I gotta th- throw them another shout out. Um, one of the hosts is just as 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 gay as can be and he he will not i i made a reference to billy eichner i was like i'm not a big fan of billy eichner just like i'm i'm gay and i'm in your face about it and one of the hosts was like i feel like you're calling me out because that is all that i am (laughs) oh no um let's see (laughs) trying to think of some other like just off the top of my head there is a horror audio drama with some really big names attached to it, like Kristen Bell, called Deadly Manners. And Ooh. Oh, I have I have read, uh, not read, I've listened to that one. I like that one. It's the same people who did Darkest Night, and I was a big yes. fan of Darkest Night. Um, this I one is a little Night. bit more... <sighs> it's not as grotesque as Darkest Night gets. Um, yeah. So I feel like that one's pretty safe to, like... Most people can get into that one, um, and it does have some LGBTQ representation. And of course, you know, there's there's some great uh, queer representation on Dungeons and Chill and uh, Comic Trades Monthly. Yeah. So just gonna throw those out there, you know. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, and and speaking of of D and D campaigns, <laughs> do do you want to mention that? I will happily mention this D and D campaign <laughs> that I threw together with gum and spit and a little bit of varnish <laughs> and a whole heck of a lot of luck let, let we'll, we'll announce officially on our podcast our patreon um Yay! We're, we're, we're still hammering out the details but one of the things that we are doing is we are going to be doing a cosplay themed D game i am dming because like i said on the thing 
I have a hard time letting go of just control. <laughs> And so uh-huh. Panon and V Fire, and we invited Corpuscular Cosplay to come on. You may have heard them on other episodes. Uh, specifically, they were fantastic in the Dread game. I loved playing yes. with them. Yes, um, oh, they were so much fun. They were so much fun, and they just they just bring these two characters to life because they they live together and they get to talk about those characters a lot more. <laughs> uh, they were like this D and D power couple. They really <laughs> are. Seriously, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we we did our first episode. You can expect in in the next little while that we are also going to be releasing the audio. We are not going to exclude anybody, but if you want the video experience, if you want to watch it, it's going to be on our Patreon. The first episode will also be on our YouTube, just so that way, again, open entry. um, But from here on out, if you want to watch the experience, V-Fire did a drawing like halfway through the episode (laughs) of a character that I threw in there, not to spoil who the character was, but... I thought this was going to be like a note, like a nonsense character, one and done. It's like now I got to make like a whole campaign around this one character. I love him <laughs> so much. Isn't that how D and D always goes? It really though? is. Um, <laughs> so, like I said, go to our our Patreon. What's our Patreon? Uh, v Fire. Keep an eye out for it. It will be coming up publishing soon. We'll have the audio available <laughs> just a month later. So if you want to join us and watch the video of it. Uh, It'll be held there. We're still working on a few bugs. For instance, I accidentally didn't turn on my microphone for the first three minutes. Oh, Oh, no! no! So I I just did this thing where I I read my own lips and assumed I knew what I was talking about. (laughs) It doesn't sound different at all. (laughs) Oh, no! So... Again, I'm so excited uh, to watch this video now. <laughs> it'll be on our YouTube. Episode one uh, will be on our YouTube. You can also go to uh, just listen to the audio of it. Uh, I had a, so much fun. We we did it for like two hours, and I had so much fun. I I still chuckle about it. And there were there were some physical comedy aspect moments where I got to like really act out. And one of my wife's partners is staying with us during the COVID time. And he's just like, no, I loved it when, when the cobalt just kind of like came into frame and you just leaned into the camera and then leaned <laughs> out of the camera. So it was a lot of fun. Yes, good, um, good, good. I had so much fun and, and I cannot wait for, for more of those episodes. We'll be doing those once a month. It'll be great. Yay! I'm super excited about those. I'm so excited. Well, <laughs> um, we wanted to end this episode with some positivity, uh, both from us and from you guys at home. Uh, we invited everyone who wanted to share their stories, any positive affirmations, um, just messages they wanted to share. Uh, that um, how did I put it? Um, Tell us how cosplays helped you find who you are, how you found support in our community, um, or how you've supported others, or just share some love. So we wanted to share your messages. Um, I'm going to start with some of the ones from the Facebook group. Uh, we have uh, Louise, who is Summoner Doormat. Uh, is her cosplay name. She says, cosplay has been a huge part of helping me find an identity for myself and understand the community as a whole. I wasn't exposed to anything LGBTQIA plus as a kid. So when I first encountered it as a teen, it offered a whole other outlook on the world. As sad as it is to think about, I feel like it would have taken me ages to understand trans without cosplay being my gateway. I still remember how ignorant I was about it all. And I'm glad I have the ability to look back and laugh at myself. It shows how much I've grown. Uh, and Noli also wrote on the Facebook page, I'm a generation where it was black and white, blue or pink. Being more on the spectrum of gender fluid cosplay allowed me to be a man when I wanted to. It was an unf- unforeseen way to allow me to be myself on either spectrum, and yet combining them both to feel, in a sense, like a good fit. Once upon a time when gay was akin to a mental illness, whoops, my age is showing, I tried to be in a, in a quote-unquote straight relationship. It always felt I had to put the shoe on the wrong foot, admitting my attraction to quote-unquote feminine more over than the masculine. The cosplaying cosplay allowing you to be something between bishi. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get that one. Um, Bishonen, which is like a pretty male character. Okay, uh, it was an it was a nice fit. Finding others who felt the same or were under other colorful flag, it really helps me learn about them and myself. This made me feel 
more comfortable with who I was and what I feel I am. The cosplay community also really allows this old lady to sit and listen to the next generation and their acceptance and education with genders and sexuality as more partners than anything else. They all teach me so much and seeing their freedom to express who and what they are. It really is inspiring. Yay. I love Anoli. <laughs> Yay. Uh, we also have from uh, Sudi, who's also known as uh, Silverfire Studio. I feel that we are so lucky to have the wholesome cosplay community that we have. I know others may not have it as awesome as we do locally, though I'm here to tell you that you may not just have found it yet. Look here at the Cosplay Stitch and Seam group. Uh, it seems that the best people have come together here to encourage, support, and give and receive advice. The same hearts here have gone through so much and are so willing to share love and support on matters that are closer to our souls than cosplay. There's genuine care. I have always felt welcome by my fellow nerds, even in times that I'm scared, nervous, or just simply having a really hard time. It's made me feel secure, and with that, I can be honest with myself and uh, true to others. That security, that sense of belonging when you don't know where where you can belong is what makes us cosplayers brave people. We are brave enough to try something new and fail. We are brave enough to admit something we thought scary at first and discover ourselves. We are brave enough to stand up against toxi toxicity and defend to defend others. And that is what I love about our cosplay community. I hope that this community continues to support and grow and invite in every being that they too may feel the love and care that I have. Aww. Yeah. Bad. Um, we had a mail in from our, to our Gmail that was from, uh, X Angel. Uh, she wrote, uh, I think the world is so much brighter with everyone I've met and I want you all to enjoy and celebrate your life. Happy pride. Aww. Yay. Thank you, X-Angel. Uh, and one more from Facebook. Kristen writes, Throughout my childhood and teens, I struggled to find friends at all. And as a transplant to Utah, I struggled to learn about the general culture and lifestyles here simply because I did not know how to insert myself when I mostly observed exclusive behaviors from the neighborhood folks. I often found this in schools, too, and it was difficult feeling alone especially during a time where I had no resource material to support or even describe my gender identity and sexuality. There was a time period where I simply felt lost and alone. I turned into an I turned into anime. I turned to anime and video games to cope because everything was so diverse and often real life questions and struggles would be addressed and I would feel happy to have found characters I could relate to and I didn't often feel as alone. In high school, I discovered other people who appreciated the qualities of anime, and my cosplaying adventures really began then. I was finally able to connect with people with similar interests, similar involvements in the LGBTQIA plus communities. My involvement was further enhanced in uni when I discovered new groups to support and be supported by. Ultimately, though, the Utah cosplaying community saved my life because I finally felt accepted, understood, supported during a time where I needed it most. Although my cosplay focus no longer is strictly video game or anime, I'm happy that my work is still appreciated in this community, and my production levels have increased tremendously, having the continued support of connecting with others and sharing the love of common interests that span many fandoms. One more from uh, Kame of uh, Kyoku Photography, uh, also known as Turtle Bunny's Cosplay. Uh, she sent in... Um, Cosplay helped me grow into a self I didn't even know I wanted to be. The freedom to explore what it felt like to be other people made me realize the kind of person I had always wished I was. Without this hobby, I wouldn't have met the friends I have now, the first friends to know my true self and to love and embrace me for it. And of course, without the confidence and connections cosplay gave me, I never would have traveled to the con where I met my beautiful wife. Mm. Love each other and stand proud. Mm. Aww. Aww. I like that. Oh, so sweet. Um, I love our community. <laughs> me too. Me too. Um, I just wrote down some thoughts that I had. Um, 
which is uh, just like with cosplay, I feel like we should never stop learning. The more we share our experiences, the more we realize that we are all human and all worthy of love. It's okay if you don't know yet. It's okay if you're not out. It's okay to be curious. And that's why learning is so important. And knowing ourselves better is such an important part of our growth. Uh, learning more about mental health has helped me realize I needed to work on my own. Learning, learning more about gender and sexual identity has helped me understand and support those around me and also helped me to be more honest with myself. Uh, not everyone has a safe space to be themselves, but cosplay is about being what we love, being what inspires us, uh, being what we wish we were. Uh, we have such a great capacity for understanding, for playing new roles, and for sharing our love through our art. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Yeah. Do you guys have, have thoughts you want to share? <laughs> Nothing, nothing as eloquently uh, <laughs> said, but th I, I went after, after we did our D and D session, I was just feeling very confident. I, I felt very happy and very supported and loved. And I went out and I shared some of that love in the D and D community on Reddit. And I got a lot of people who said like, thank you. And then I got a lot of people who saying like, this is blind support. There are some people who, you know, don't need this kind of support or they, they do need a, a different area of support. And I just, I think that um, something that's been in my mind for a little bit is like the the phrase it never it, it doesn't cost anything to be nice, and yeah. I don't agree with that a hundred percent because it it can cost you something, it it can cost you a little bit of your time, right. it can cost you um, an uncomfortable conversation, it can cost you um, you know opportunities, but at the mm. same time, the reward of being kind the the satisfaction, the being able to say that you supported somebody, the 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 fact that you said you were able to sit and listen instead of just sit and take action, and you know maybe donating money isn't the right thing to do for some for some people or for some groups. Um, maybe right now we just need to figure out how can we best love and support each other, and sometimes we have to do it blindly and it's going to cost you something and it's going to cost a little bit of time and it's going to going to cost a little bit of patience and it's going to be a little uncomfortable for a lot of people mm -hmm. because some people need to ask uncomfortable questions of like why are you loving this person why do you love this this is something that i don't agree with personally and and that's going to be an uncomfortable conversation and now in the year 2020 is the perfect time to have that uncomfortable conversation and allow someone to grow and learn yeah Thank you. Mercedes, do you want to add anything before we wrap up? I was going to say, here's my probably least eloquent out of all the three of you. <laughs> <laughs> three of us, three of us. Oh my gosh. We I just want words. to know your feelings just and feel saying, your love and positivity. Yes. Uh, I, again, I really love our community. I love all the good things that are in it. The willingness to welcome each other to accept one another to understand each other and to help each other grow in ways that we didn't think that you know we needed to grow in the first place and again this this whole hobby has brought me uh massively out of my shell and comfort zone uh <laughs> and i don't know i just i love seeing how we can come together as a community to help each other, to support one another. And if anyone's ever bothering you guys, let me know and I'll get after them. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I like how all of your speeches like are so cute and positive and end with a threat. <laughs> I will crush That's them. The most like accurate <laughs> summation of the fire. <laughs> This is the nicest, most cutest, positive person and ends with a threat. <laughs> uh, seriously, oh, if anyone wants to hurt this community, I will be all over that. Because, mm -hmm. I don't know, I love you guys. You're precious to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know who I need to be sick yeah. on. <laughs> So happy Pride, you guys. Um, if you want to share your stories with us, horror stories, happy stories, any kind of cosplay related fun that you would like to share, you can go to, uh, you can, blah, blah, blah. you can send us an email at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com or go to the website cosplaystitchandseam.com. 
and or you can join our <laughs> Facebook uh, and you can make sure that you join our page and our group. And our group is where we have been sharing our love and our appreciation for everyone in this episode. Um, if you want to join it for our work in pro- progress Wednesdays, uh, we would love to have you and share your crafting, share your problems. And we want to support you and make sure that we build you up and and try and support as blindly and and show as much appreciation as we can. Um, if you want to tell us what you think of the show and don't necessarily use Facebook or social media, you can also go to our uh, go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review there, as well as Stitcher or Podchaser or anywhere else that accepts reviews. We would love to hear about it. Um, I have been checking those li- those locations. If there's another place that you left a review and you uh, haven't been given a shout out on the show because we want to do that uh let me know we'll uh, reach out to us through the email or social media and i will go hunting it down and i will give you the shout out at the end of the show i promise (laughs) hey um thanks as always to macy roberts for use of our theme song and to david jeffress for his amazing editing tell us about what's going on in your podcasty areas uh so like i said we are doing a black panther by Ta-Nehisi Coates. And we just had a conversation this morning and we will be covering The Visions, um, which is a very fantastic story about being segregated and persecuted for the way that you look and the way that you act. And I'm very excited for that episode. Um, That will be later this month on Comic Trades Monthly. And on Dungeons & Chill, we are on the end of season three. Um, The penultimate episode released today as of recording and i am so very proud of it the audio quality and the music is just so good um yay and if if i get enough people telling me to release the la- last episode of the season i will do that a i will do that tomorrow if i get enough people talking about it <laughs> uh, so yeah dungeons and chill comic trades monthly and the uh, and the Patreon for Cosplay Stitch and Seam. Yay! I'm excited. I'm so excited about our campaign. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, now more than ever, remember to be that positive change you want to see in your community. Um, we love you guys. We are so grateful for your support. I feel like we've said that a lot this episode, and I don't want it to yeah. come off as like patronizing, but we really do. Like, um, with We're just how, a bunch of cheesy saps who really rough, love you yeah, guys. Yeah, I know. Well, like with how hard things are these days, and and they really are. It's so nice to have a creative outlet. It's so nice to have a community that's supportive and loving, and we appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Happy Pride. Be proud. Be loud. We love you. Bye. Yes. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. My wife is is probably screaming at the top of Zier's lungs right now just because I mentioned it. Um, I'm mm. surprised you can't hear it through like the roof or whatever. Um, <laughs> One second, guys. One second. Okay. Sorry. It was my wife. My wife came in to say, <laughs> well, you mentioned Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> Flying in through the wall just to be like, no! <laughs> no, my wife freaking loves this show. Oh, good. Okay, okay. We can be friends. Yeah, no. Like... <laughs>